All right, folks, we are live. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Instagram. Everybody's kind of starting to come in. This is going to be a full-blown drum clinic or a full-blown, more like a full-blown masterclass. I am going to play. I definitely want it to be fun, entertaining, and fingers crossed, maybe a little inspiring. But I'm really invested in this being an educational uh, experience as well. So this is a bring a notebook type of event. If you want to take a second, find a piece of paper to write with. Um, we're going to be covering some real content, some real content that I use when I'm soloing, when I'm improvising. And the point of this clinic is to improve our ability to play drum solos, right? It is called the three tools for playing better drum solos masterclass. Um, and these are things that are always going through my head when I'm in the heat of heat of the Im of improvisation to keep my playing focused, to give it structure and to ultimately make it feel intentional and musical. Now, before we get into this, I'm seeing people commenting everywhere and that's beautiful. If you are on Instagram, I would strongly encourage you actually jump over to my YouTube channel and watch from there because I'm going to be posting graphics on the screen um, that are going to really be important for understanding what I'm talking about with these concepts. Um, and without them, it's going to be pretty hard because I'm not going to be describing the graphics in great detail because on YouTube, people will be able to see them. So pop over to YouTube if you can. Uh, it will be worth it, I, I promise. And this masterclass will become available on my website after the fact, by the end of today, by the evening. And while we're talking about the website, as you can see, if you're on YouTube at the top of the screen, uh, the promo code for today to get a free month of access on the website is Solo Better. We're going to cover some topics today that are uh, on the site and some topics in this clinic that are not on the website that are new. Um, some of my some ideas I've been working with for a long time and some brand new ideas to me um, as far as giving them names, giving them structure, making them like a teachable item. But these are ideas that are always on, uh, in my, in, you know, on my mind as, as I'm playing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it, right? We're talking about drum solos. Most people's biggest problem when they're thinking about their drum solos if it's a, even if it's a small drum solo, right, within the context of a band setting, people play hits, or you've got like the drum solo section, or if you're playing open drum solos, and also if you are just improvising, like for the joy of it, in your practice room. So regardless of what category you fall into with these, regardless of the reasons that you want to improve your improvisation, this is the type of stuff that's going to hopefully be applicable no matter what your level is. And I want to make a bit of a, of a, a specific clarification. These tools will be useful if you are composing a drum solo, but these will be, these are designed to be specifically useful when you are not it's not pre-composed, when you are in the heat, what I call the blurry heat of improvisation, right? And your adrenaline's pumping and your mind might not be thinking calmly and clearly like it does when you're in the practice room. And that's where these tools are going to be exceptionally useful because they're going to help you keep things focused. So let's go ahead and jump into things. We are going to talk about three tools today. They are, um, one, the web of intent, upgraded web of intent, in case you've heard me speak about it before. Two, groove modes, crucial creative tool. Three, brand new, no one's ever heard about this, but it's something that's on my mind all the time, form fragments. And again, if you're on Instagram, pop over YouTube because this is where the overlay graphics begin and you're going to really want to see them. So let's jump into the web of intent. The web of intent is this page. All these PDFs are going to be available with the masterclass on the website and you have a promo code for a free month so you can go get them and download them. No issue. But if we zoom in on the web of intent, let's think about what this is here. So let's uh, uh, just to point out a couple features here, right? You've basically got several continuums that are moving away from each other in opposite directions. And at the end of each continuum is an adjective you could use to describe your drumming. So at the bottom, right, you've got quiet and then the spectrum up to loud. Across the, uh, you know, the middle, you've got slow and then you've got fast. Things get much more interesting as you get off of those center axes, right? The diagonal one, one of the diagonal ones is all instruments, one instrument. And what I mean by that is within the drum set, right? So only playing the snare drum or playing every drum and cymbal 
you know, within this context. Another, the other diagonal, uh, extremely useful, is the empty to busy scale. And the thicker lines that define the ones, the ones that I just mentioned, those are the ones that I find on my mind the most frequently. You can apply to basically everything you're doing, right? Those are like the, the big generalizable universal ones. But then you'll see between, and this is what I'm most excited about here, I've added ones that are always on my mind, but that are a little bit more specific, a little bit more nuanced, um, and not necessarily more specialized, but, but really important musical ones. Like for example, just to the right, one click uh, after the, from the loud and quiet up and down uh, continuum, you've got tight sounds and open sounds, right? And this is a spectrum that you can move along. Now, that's one aspect of this, but I want to draw your attention to another part of this that's very important, which is the center. This is the gray zone, if you can read it. Um, the gray zone is a dangerous area that we're basically trying to avoid most of the time. The gray zone is when things become relatively uninteresting, when they become boring, right? If you think about the slow, fast uh, continuum, you're sort of in a medium tempo and loud, soft, you're in like a medium volume and like all instruments, one instrument, you're playing like some of the instruments and empty, busy, it's kind of like in the middle and you could look at any of these, um, you know, is it smooth or is it aggressive? Is it gentle or, oh, sorry, is it gentle or is it aggressive? Is it smooth or is it syncopated? And you're just kind of stuck in the middle and you never escape those like very average, very normal, very unexciting center bounds, if you will. So this is what the web of intent is, but how is it used, right? So it's used in two ways. It's used one in the heat of performance when you are in the act of improvising. And it's used again, uh, or it's used also, it's also useful to reflect back into your practice routine to tell you what should you practice, right? So let's, for example, take, I'm, uh, let's take an example. Let's just look at the busy and empty scale. So if we look, take a look at the busy and empty scale and actually try a specific example here, let's say I am trying to be creative and I'm in, again, the blurry heat of improvisation. I'm playing the drums and I'm playing a groove, right? <laughs> Okay. Right, it's a nice groove, but it's you know middle everything. It's extremely average in pretty much every way you could describe the groove. So that's gonna get old fast. Now, if I start thinking about some of these continuums from the web of intent, this gives me a direction to move and it keeps things limited because again, most of our problem most of our problems as improvisers is playing too many ideas all at the same time. I want to play everything. I've blown all my cool chops 20 seconds in and I have no idea where to go. So if you are thinking of the web of intent and you're drawing on a specific continuum, you're not really allowed to leave the confines of the type of thing you're doing, like the groove setting. In this case, I'm playing a hi-hat groove, right? Which means to make it busier, uh, my question is, can I make the hi-hat groove busier? Not, can I go play a fill that is busier? It's like within the setting of, that I'm working in, what does it mean to make this fill busy or this groove busier, right? So I'm here. It's getting busier and busier and busier. I'm exploring further along that route. And you can easily see how in a solo, this would be a path that you slowly move along, but you don't only just move along it. You jump back perhaps the other direction to create contrast, to create tension and release. Now you've got a specific creative focus. You're locked into a specific drumming setting and it's your job to stick within those constraints while you try to do some creative work. If I go the other direction, empty is actually more interesting with a groove like this. If I go toward the empty direction, so I'm here and I'll move toward empty.
right? So like, when things get empty, this is the real, this is a real trick. Um, the question becomes, how do I keep it interesting? Because if I make it empty and it also becomes boring and I just go, Right, there's nothing wrong with this, but there's so much more you can do. So what you'll find is when you move toward empty, the placement of the notes becomes so much more important. Right, so you have to really consider, if you've got one note to play in a measure on the kick drum, where are you going to put it? You know, is it going to be on B1? Or is it going to be... Mm. Right, so whichever direction you move, it's going to challenge you, but it's gonna challenge you in different ways. As you move toward busy, it's a coordination, it's a technical issue. I need to develop new vocabulary. Whereas you move the other way, I need to take great care in where I place notes because now they really matter musically. So this is where the web of intent reflects back as a useful tool in the practice room. Because if you are working on, let's take a, a more specific example. If you're working on drum and bass grooves, Let's say you're working on this. You've just learned like drum and bass 101. So you've just learned that and you're like, I'm just kind of stuck playing the groove and I don't know what else to do, right? So this is where the web of intent comes in and you go, okay, if I wanted to move more busy, can I do that? No. Well, I need to think of new ways to do that, right? And if I'm playing essentially most of the 16th notes as it is. It might not be that you need to play more notes, but that the melody needs to be busier. Sort of more kick drums, more snare drum accents. And then you're going. Okay, way more busier, even though it's still basically on the 16th note grid. That's what it means to move that direction. And you have to expand your vocabulary very carefully and intentionally within these confines to do that. So it gives you something to practice. If you are invested in getting better at drum and bass, the web of intent can, it can tell you how to go there. Or you can take another of the, uh, well, actually, let's stick with this one before we think about other continuums. Because then drum and bass, and I move toward empty. Okay, I'm moving toward empty on drum and bass. What does that even mean? It's supposed to be busy, but it doesn't matter. We don't have to keep playing the dr drum and bass 101 groove. I want to make this more empty. So let me start removing notes and see what happens and see what new challenges I find. And in the practice room, that's going to instruct me. I'm gonna have to come up with new ad ways to adapt this um, and make it work. So here I am. Right, so none of that vocabulary would have appeared back in the gray zone, right? Because I'm trying to figure out how to add space and it's forcing me to do different things. And with that, that space and with those new ideas, I'm coming up with actual new vocabulary that's actually different. So this is the web of intent. That's how it works. Um, to just mention, a I'm not gonna go through every single one, but to mention a couple of the other continuums that are uh, a little bit less obvious, right? You've got all instruments, one instrument, right? So check out like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna solo basically um, and move from one instrument and add instruments as I go until I'm playing like, you know, octopus, right? Everything at the same time. So this might look like, let me start on just the snare drum or actually let me start on Tom one. Let's get, let's get cool with it here.
it doesn't actually matter to me in this moment if that was cool or not because the point is it was focused my mind was not a mess during that process and honestly when you're playing a drum solo that is really saying something it's really easy for your mind to be very messy and this gave me a specific set of steps to follow as I move from one extreme of that uh, continuum on the web of intent to the other so now I have a I have a destination I know where to go and I know exactly what the next steps gonna be and there's a million ways you can do that and it doesn't matter what groove setting you're in I could be playing a jazz solo or a heavy metal solo I can still use this continuum and you might have noticed in the middle there as I, I got all the way everything was added and then I jumped way back to just Tom one Right, recall back to where we were. We're going to talk about this soon with form fragments. And then I'm back in it. So anyways, that's a fun one. You've got binary versus ternary, right? Is it straight time versus triplet? How much triplet are you adding into the straight time? That's how you move along that spectrum. You've got smooth versus syncopated, right? Consider this type of groove. Smooth versus syncopated. You get on the grid versus off the grid, right? So fully out of time. Versus. And everything in between. You've got your swanky grooves. Anyways, so that's the web of intent. That is how it is used. Let's move on to the second tool for creativity that we are talking about here. Quick reminder, in case you are joining on Instagram, uh hop onto the same stream happening on YouTube because there's graphic overlays. They're going to be very helpful for understanding what the heck I'm talking about. Um, so pop over to YouTube. Also, if you're joining recently, you can use the term, the code solo better when you sign up for jpbouvetmethod.com. And that is a website where I have many uh, courses that s especially focus on developing creativity, freedom, and flow on the drums, basically. Uh, my focus is creating a systematic approach to developing improvisation because a lot of times creative creativity and creative ideas, they get delivered in very ambiguous and unhelpful ways. And over the years, I've been really finding a lot of success with my students making processes out of these that you get to the end of and you've developed a whole bunch of vocabulary, not only that you can recite, but that you can flow with. And this is like a big thing right now. We're just finishing what's called the fills and chops right left left kick course um it's all this vocabulary based around the right left left kick pattern so it's not just i can play the right left left kick pattern when i want it's oh i've got six or seven pieces of vocabulary that i can rearrange on the fly and it's dope all the time and i can do it forever so anyways jp Bavay method solo better is the code it'll be a free month of access to everything including this master class which will be posted there and the pdfs so speaking of Next tool here is groove modes. Groove modes, these are pretty simple to understand and honestly, pretty simple as far as understanding how they're useful creatively. A groove mode is a set of constraints that you place on your drumming that you improvise within. So the classic example is I'm playing a groove and I'm playing eighth notes on the hi-hat and a backbeat on two and four. Basically, it's an ostinato. And I'm improvising with the kick drum. The melodic content is delivered to the kick drum. Great. Um, that is one groove mode, but there are an infinite variety of these, right? And the way that you use them creatively is you determine more than one and you gain the freedom to improvise within each one separately. And then you can move between them strategically. So if we pull up an actual example of this, I think we've got one, yeah, right here. Here's one that builds on, right? So groove mode one is what I was just saying. Eighth notes on the hi-hat, backbeat on three, so it's a halftime groove. One and two and three and four. And no ghost notes and the melodies on the kick drum. Okay.
Okay, pretty limiting. That's fine. Let's look at groove mode number two. Groove mode number two is I'm improvising using what I call the 16 invisible rhythms. There's a course on my website that teaches you to develop a bunch of grooves like this. But basically what's going on is that the melody is now being played with my right hand. My right hand is improvising with the 16 invisible rhythms. My left hand is playing ghost notes. Backbeats on three. And my kick drum sometimes joins my right hand. Right, that's the basic uh, type of freedom that's taught in that course. You could contrast these two groove modes now. And you can go, okay, I've got timekeeping and kick drum melody. And I've got right hand lead melody with kick drum chiming in. And now you've got, again, focus. This is the key thing, right? Putting the blinders on, adding constraints. That's where creativity thrives. And I'm moving between the two. So now, what, listen, now that you know exactly what's going on in my mind, I'm going to try to strategically move between these in a way that builds energy, takes away the energy, builds tension, offers release, right? A surprise or not. So here we go. Uh, Right, so by moving between these, you can do it in a lot of different ways. And you'll notice the other thing that is happening here is the web of intent is back, right? So tool one and tool two are really natural, uh, you know, buddies, right? So as I'm doing this, I'm going back to groove number one, groove mode one, just like the timekeeper. But you notice the volume was changing a lot, right? If I'm doing... Or if I'm doing, right, that was the same groove, right? Transcribed, identical, uh, but you've got volume alterations from the web of intent and you've got looseness of sound in, uh, uh, alterations, right? Remember the loose sounds, tight sounds? I've got quiet, tight sounds and loud, loose sounds. And I'm even trying to hit the side of the snare drum. So it's a long sound, an open sound to match the open hi-hat. So you're getting all of these different things happening at the same time. But all I'm thinking is moving between these two groove modes, really. Now, how is this? In, this is obviously the way that this is helpful in the heat of improvisation is obvious in the performance space. But again, reflecting back into the practice room, this also sort of has a, uh, a, a reflective value in trying to define groove modes that contrast each other and give you an opportunity to, to build something interesting, you might realize, okay, within this groove mode, if I wanna make an adaptation, I don't have any vocabulary to use, right? So boom, now you know what to practice back in the, back in the practice room. Um, and okay, so groove modes, they can be, in this case, this was a good example of ones that are really similar, right? They're, it's two grooves. Uh, the, they're both halftime, the same types of melodies are happening, right? The 16 invisible rhythms are going on on the kick drum, but they're also going on on the hi-hat. 
But two groove modes can also be radically different, right? There are no rules around this. So if we pick another one here, um, what do we got? What do we got? Yeah, here's a great one. Um, yeah. So one, this is just another example. Um, and actually these ones aren't super different, but check it out. I'm gonna make it super different. Uh, number one, this is swanky half swung. So now the uh, web of intent on the grid, off the grid, we're kind of like moving toward off the grid, right? Or actually let's go. Right, so we're swanky, we're half swung, we're off the grid, but it's in time. Loose open sounds like you just heard. And slow subdivision. I'm thinking one and two and three and four. That's another web of intent item, slow subdivision. And then let's flip to the other one, super on the grid. Uh, tight sounds, right? and fast subdivision. Now we're 16th notes. And I'm gonna add another element to this, different tempo. So just to emphasize that they don't have to be similar, they can be extremely different. Check this out. So now I'm gonna be here, open sound. So I'm actually giving myself the freedom to change the tempo when I switch. And this is one of my favorite transitions. I mean, just for the record, playing solos, the time, like you're the captain of the time. If you're doing an open drum solo in a, uh, in like a show and you've got like, okay, give the drummer some, like, and you're going, mm. right? Uh, that's all cool, but you might, you might kind of run out of ideas there. The crowd might actually really love to hear you just go, and then literally just go back to it, right? right? You know the song, you know the tempo, just basically restart it. What a breath of fresh air, that's a dope move right there. Um, so anyways, these are some ideas for groove modes. You could have a lot of them, um, but let's jump into the third tool uh, for our use here. Um, again, if you're just joining, if you're joining on Instagram, go to YouTube. There's graphics that are helping explain how all these things work. Um, it's just better over there. The stream is better. But, um, and also if you're recently joining, use the code solo better, sign up for JP Bouvet method, get access to, I think 24 right now courses, maybe average about 14 lessons per course that build you freedom on the drums, right? Um, let's jump into the last tool here. This is called form fragments. This is something that has been on my mind for a long time that I've never taught, and I'm pretty excited about it. So form fragments, these are moments of seemingly obvious structure that imply an overarching form and create a feeling of familiarity for the listener. Right. So just to be clear, you don't have a plan for this solo. You don't have form. Right. That's the whole point of these tools. That's the whole point of improvising. It's that you are literally making it up as you go. But that doesn't mean it needs to sound messy, right? When someone improvises a speech or they tell you a story about their day, right? There is a coherent arc to it. There can be a coherent arc to it. And it's the same with drumming. So my goal when I'm improvising is to be making it up on the spot and have it seem planned, right? This is sort of also my motto for life. If you're really winging it, and it really coming across like I know exactly what I'm doing. So good motto for the drums and off the drums. But 
form fragments. Let's think about what this means. These are just little sort of indicators that are like, oh, like that felt like a bridge or that felt like a chorus moment. Or you have created, you know, like an ABAB section and you're like, oh, I feel like there's uh, like repetition and a progression happening that for the listener is like, dope like i feel like i'm listening to a song i feel like there's a lot of planning going on behind this but the key thing is you don't actually have to be following a form and i would say don't follow a form like you don't have to get into a drum solo and play like a section then a b section then a c section and then do the outro that was exactly like the intro and that's how drum solos work that's one formula sure but what i have learned over many years of improvising many drum solos in front of crowds is that it really doesn't matter if the form is actually coherent, what matters is that it feels like there is form and direction along the way. Now, this is cool. So let's, um, let's just take a look at some of these examples that I have, have on the screen here. I think this one makes them a little bigger. Um, number one, A, B forms, right? Very uh, happy partner with the groove modes that you just learned about. If you've got two groove modes, those are so easily A, B, A, B forms. And this is, I mean, I just posted a solo on YouTube like a week ago, and it was a short little cute solo, A, B, A, B, right? And I don't know exactly, yeah, I do remember what it was, right? It was, it was this, right? This is two groove modes. One was, was this specific vocabulary that I was working on. <laughs> Right, that type of flowy, groove-ish stuff. Flow grooves is what I call them. Um, and then, voila, B section was a different groove mode that was just. Voila, A, B, A, B, uh, A, landed with the A uh, to put a little button on it, but it feels like a song a little bit now, right? And basically what these form fragments are is we're a lot of the times going to actually take ideas from like song and especially popular music song, songwriting tricks, right? So that's the first one, A, B, A, B. You can do this however you want. You could do an A, A, B, A thing, right? Where you could go, uh, you know, A, A down on the tom, you're playing a melody down here, and then B, up on the high tom. So it's like, A. A. B. A. Cool. The next one is the dubstep breath. Uh, this breath exists in a lot of music. It's not just a dubstep thing, but to me, I, I was once at a dubstep concert and I like, I, I learned in such a visceral way the importance of this move, right? This is the classic like, don't, don't, it's building. Don't, 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 go, don't, 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 let it drop, right? It's that moment where the bass finally like lets up for a second. In an actual show, the bass, you know, if you've never been to like an EDM or, or a dubstep show or something, like the bass is so physical that your body is like literally, your chest cavity is vibrating, that when they give you that moment, oh my God, it literally feels like you're going, <sighs> and then you're like back in like the next, you know, for the next minute. But that's why they keep every freaking song. They build it up, they give you that moment, and then they let it hit. Let's take that tool. Right, that is a really useful tool. And you could do it in a billion different ways, but maybe you're just going. Right, or you can psych people out. 
right? Sometimes they do this at the show too, right? Big build. <laughs> Maybe the build just starts right over. Um, the dubstep breath, very, very nice tool. Um, you can get your cymbal choke on in there. <laughs> ah! All right. Number three, the intro outro. There's a thing in psychology called the primacy and the recency effect. This means that people tend to remember the beginning and the end of things. And it is well demonstrated in many different settings. You can use this to your advantage. And it honestly is kind of a, it's not quite a cheap trick. Uh, it is a useful trick. It's almost a cheap trick. But if you just make the end of your solo like the beginning, uh, it's going to feel coherent at the end, really no matter what happened in the middle. So if I start a solo, like, uh, you know, just doing like, or I just play some like fives, you know, I'm just like, like my old Russo solo. <laughs> right, and then I do a bunch of stuff. Oh, it's a cat. And then, you know, two minutes later, I'm like... like cool boom feels like it ended where it started um okay number four returning to the chorus what is the chorus the chorus you know, like again we're thinking of pop music here in pop music what's the chorus i don't know it's the most familiar part it just feels like a chorus right if i go like judy why didn't you call me yesterday it sounds like a red hot chili pepper song judy it sounds like a chorus whereas if i go Judy never called me yesterday. Sounds like a verse. You can do that with the drums too. Which one's this? Which one's this? Right, cool. We've got a chorus. We've got a, a uh, verse. And even, check this out. Even if you're doing a bunch of complicated stuff, again, let me remind you, it is okay to do a, a no transition transition to a different tempo. So if you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff, and like you're doing that for like minutes. Cool. And then chorus comes. And then a minute later, go back to that same ish groove. No one's going to know if you played the same groove, but they will know if it felt like a chorus. And when you do it again later, they're going to, you know, coming out of now you're in triplets or you're playing Afro Cuban. And you've just been doing that for a while. And then play the same fill. that you played earlier, and boom, feels like there's a chorus, nice. Um, take it to the bridge, right, number five on the list here. This would be like a third groove mode that you introduce that is substantially different than the others. And sort of like the most obvious thing that comes to mind for me is if you're like on toms and snare and all this stuff, it would be like, oh, a ride groove, right? Just something that's just like a splash of different flavor. I don't need to demonstrate that. This next one, six, this is a cool one. One of the easiest ways to differentiate a section or create like a substantial change in energy in a song is to have your bass player stop playing for a whole section. And it really just like, suddenly it feels like, oh, something new is happening. I, I, apparently I'm supposed to listen more closely. Uh, that's what it feels like. And you can do the same thing, right? We've got high notes, we've got low notes, as you saw in the Web of Intent. And one thing you can do is keep playing what you were playing but take the low end out, take the bass out, which is mostly your kick drum and your low tom. So if I'm doing a something like this, right? Uh,
It's like, okay, cool. We took the bass out. Or even if you're playing a groove. Right? Drop the low, and you can do the same thing with the high end, right? If you're going. Take out the high end. It sounds like a song. Right? You're making it up on the spot. And the last one is the pop music post chorus. This one, I don't, I don't know why I really like this one, but it's just literally adding an extra two measures after a section. Right? Usually we're trying to think in four bar, eight bar phrases to keep things super even, it's like feeling very familiar again. But this is a really common tool. I always think of like, Katie, there's like a lot of Katy Perry songs, like a lot of that type of pop songs. Like after the chorus, they're like singing right to the end of the chorus. So they can't just like immediately start the verse at a different vibe. So there's like two measures where they just like the guitar loop keeps looping and everything else is gone. And it just gives you like a little break. And it's cool actually that it's two measures. Like you can make it obvious if you do it with conviction and you jump on the web of intent somewhere new, then it just works, right? So, I mean, the classic example is you're playing, you know. something like that but it, it could be anything and it just needs to be different right it could even be the opposite like instead of coming down you go up so you're playing kind of a low key thing you're going uh mm. and i'm going to add a little post chorus two bars here Okay, we had a little jump. It was something different, and then boom, we're back. Actually, I would switch into a different like groove after that, but you get the idea. So, sweet. That's the third. Um, that is the third tool for creativity that we're talking about today. Um, I would actually, yes. So, what I want you to do, if you, I can see the chat coming in here. I'm gonna play a drum solo, but I want you to provide the um, the groove settings the drumming uh, inspiration the ideas so the chat is usually like 20 seconds behind what i'm saying so i'm going to keep talking but put in like you know a style a type of drumming a genre a song or a band that i might know although i'm really bad with that kind of stuff um, and i will try to construct a solo based on some of the ideas in the meantime to review where we are how we got here Let's think about what we just talked about. These are tools for creativity. When you're in the blurry heat of improvisation, these are things that can keep your playing focused. It can add form or the appearance of form. And it can prevent you from playing all your ideas and blowing all your ideas all at once. It also can reflect back into the practice room in a way that is very instructive for things you could practice. It is often difficult to know what should I practice next or at all and this can be a very overwhelming and confusing thing this can help right if you are into whatever if you are into the playing triplet fills like the buddy rich course on my website this kind of stuff right that kind of stuff uh you might just get stuck doing it and you might pull up the web of intent and you might say what can i do with this well there's one of the continuums is um uh slow melodies uh fast melodies so now the ghost notes continue being fast the melodies are slow that's hard to do that's worth practicing now you go back to the practice room you're like i would like to be able to play slow melodies while i continue this groove can i play fast melodies 
you'll find, oh my gosh, when I try to play fast melodies, it keeps spitting me out of my left hand because there's a certain chunk that switches it over to the left hand. Whoa, now we've got a lot to practice. I got to get all this stuff down left hand. Okay, it reflects back into the practice room and it keeps you rocking. So what do we got? I'm um, looking in the, uh, we've got how to, we've got someone mentioned six, eight. I'm going to build a solo with some of these. Six, eight, um, reggae. That's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take triplets from the reggae. I'm going to say triplets from you, Mr. Reggae. Uh, rock chorus. Yes. And 6-8. Uh, eight. So 6-8 six, eight triplet, rock chorus. I see swanky hip hop fives. Nice. So we've got triplet 6-8, a rock chorus, and swanky hi-hat stuff. Let's see if we can make some sensible ideas or a sensible solo with these. I'm actually going to write them down so I don't forget. We've got triplet 6-8. We've got a rock chorus. And we've got uh, swanky, swanky beats. Swanky beats. I'm going to jump into this with absolutely no planning. I'm going to try to use these tools that we just talked about to create form in the moment i can't promise it will be good but i can promise that it will be better than if i wasn't using these tools okay i'm going to play you out with this and uh, again thanks for being here uh this was really fun uh and don't forget but uh, you there's only seven days to use the solo better promo code by the end of this week it won't work anymore that'll get you a free month to this master class stored a whole course on the web of intent 16 Invisible Rhythms as Grooves Chorus, Buddy Rich Inspired Flow Mode Chorus, Fills and Chops. We just did the Right Left Left Kick Subset Chorus. Tons of stuff going on in there for all levels, including some play alongs. And uh, you can join the Facebook. Once you join the website, you can join the Facebook subscriber only Facebook group where we all hang out and do stuff. We have subscriber only Ask Me Anythings with me um, every month. And honestly, it's just a really fun time. And if I can't help you get better at the drums, I'll give you your money back. Okay, let's do it. The other thing I would like to do is resist the urge strongly to think I'm on YouTube and Instagram. I have to play fast chaps the whole time and I'm going to resist that and really try to like give myself the space to really explore these ideas like I would if I wasn't live streaming to YouTube and Instagram. So that is my musical goal for this moment and let's see where it goes.
All right, gang. So you know what's going on in my head throughout that. Feel free to rewatch that solo and review the ideas we just talked about because those were the exact things on my mind. I was just trying to have them extra on my mind. And if I could watch it back with you, I'd be able to more or less describe the exact thoughts that I was thinking. Like the web of intent, moving between open, closed sounds, slow, fast sounds, busy melodies, empty melodies, um, groove modes moving between two of the same ones, the chorus, the rock chorus that somebody brought up, I tried to do that well, hit it twice. Uh, again, different each time, but it felt similar. <laughs> and the second time it was twice as long. So you don't have to do the same thing every time. Um, yeah, so I love this stuff. I, 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 creativity is not as squishy and ambiguous and impossible to learn as most people think it is. There are some real concrete tools that we can do along the way, that we can use along the way. And then the other part of the quest is developing the vocabulary, right? If you're watching this and you're going, well, sure, like JP can do that because he's got a lot of vocabulary with six, eight triplets. He's got a lot of vocabulary with this other stuff. This is the balance, right? You have creative ideas and you have technical coordination advancement and these things move together uh, new technical abilities enable you to have more options new options give you more that you can do with the on the creative front so that is a balance i'm always trying to strike with my own teaching uh, and on the website in the courses right we take a step we introduce new vocabulary and i say okay like don't move on until you're able to control this in an improvisational setting and we take another step we introduce another piece so I'm always trying to balance those two things. They're really important. So I want you to leave this clinic feeling encouraged, right? There is not, uh, these tools are immediately applicable regardless of what you can do, but just know that they become more and more and more useful the more vocabulary that you build. Okay, gang, it's been super fun. Uh, that's all from me, JP signing off. Thanks for being here. I'll talk to you soon. Happy improvising.